So I got to talk about this. Um, first things first, man, I love this shirt, the this, this sweatshirt, uh, hoodie, whatever you call it. But although it fits perfectly around the shoulders, it's like a fucking tent around the midsection. Believe me, when we here put out our own stuff, it's going to be for fit people. It's not going to be for fat and out of shape people, you know, our own clothing range and all that. Uh, I have to buy double XL for the shoulders. Because uh, if I if I don't, then I'm going to rip the shoulders. But, I, but, you know, around the core, the midsection, uh, I need a medium, you know, quite literally, even less than that anyway. Second, my phone battery. Um, my last phone gave up, man, the battery. It, uh, you couldn't, you just couldn't use the battery. Um, I had to buy a new one. Probably, because I use, use it so damn much. This one's probably going to complain about that sometime anyway. Uh, let's see, how much do we have left? Well, we got 12%. Hopefully it'll last. This movie, Lock Up, I saw. Sylvester Stallone, uh... Uh, it's probably not one of his best movies or something, but it's about, you know, he gets wrongfully put in jail and he inspires a lot of convicts. He, and uh, one thing leads to the other and there's rival gangs in the prison. He's not a part of either gang. He just does the, does the right thing, tries to do his time. And, uh, well, this big old black dude, big motherfucker smoking cigars and stuff, you know, he has this thing, a workshop in the prison where he fixes cars now there's been an old car that's been lying there classic for like forever and uh nobody ever you know was motivated enough to fix it until stallone who's a mechanic in the movie he's like well i can do something on it and big guys like oh man it doesn't fucking matter we're you know what are we going to do even if we fix it well he inspires them to fix it cars as good as new one of his followers, or not his followers, but one of the people that helped him fix it, this young dude who doesn't know any better, oh, I want to take it out for a spin. Stallone's like, well, you're in prison, man. You can't take it out for a spin. And, um, you know, this young guy, never been down Broadway, never had chicks next to him in a car, you know, has all the thoughts in mind, which young people generally do. One thing leads to the other. He just drives that motherfucker straight out of the workshop. Needless to say, the cops get him. They bust the car up because there's sadistic cops in the pic in the movie. And uh, Stallone is the one that gets put in solitary, if I remember correctly. I don't know. Uh, and man, when he, when he returns, uh, that same dude was like, it's not so bad, we can fix it. And Stallone's like, you know, ah, forget about it. And, you know... And uh, then this dude makes the comment, what happened to you? I thought you were our leader. And Stallone just busts out saying, God damn it, I'm not your leader. We're all in here. We're all his, you know. Uh, there's a lesson in that, man. One of my other businesses, Paula, this girl who does solid, great work for me, best worker ever. Uh, this is the erotica business, and it's a lot of it has stories where the guy gets none and is happy getting none, okay? It's a lot of female-dominated stuff. It's a lot of fetish stuff. It's a lot of BDSM stuff. Um, and she loves those stories, those books that I've written, and she says, and my name on the other business is Mike as well, uh, follow the leader is what she said. And she's like... She's like, these girls don't give him what men or what people think men really want. But the funny part is, he doesn't either. And he's happy. He's very happy, naturally, not getting any. And, you know, I can send you the review, and I've posted it on Zero Excuses Fitness as well. If you search for it, you'll find it. He's very happy in that position. And, you know, the hero in a lot of those stories is in a very servile position, which has a lot to do with fetish BDSM and stuff like that. Immensely popular books, things we all think about, but we never acknowledge. And uh, she made this comment and she wrote it, follow Mike. He's the real leader with that mentality. He's got the girls and he, they don't even know it. I couldn't argue with her. She's right. 
Uh, she is spot on. Paula is spot on. She is right. Kudos. Anyway, all these stories. Uh, a lot of people come to me, you know, they have this problem. Oh, how do we fix it? Or if I have a problem, oh, you should be able to fix it. You're a genius. Oh, you know, this. Now, admittedly, yeah, leaders are natural. They're more natural. You got to work at it, but you have that inside of you. Not everybody can be a leader. You know, you have to be put through a lot of tests, turn tests in order to be a, you know, but my point is this, the best leaders in the world, man, are worthless without, until and unless you and fitness wise, for example, oh, he's a leader. Look at his YouTube, his Instagram. Oh, he looks so good. He looks like a movie star. Oh, this, but it didn't come for free. And until and unless, if you're listening to this video, if you're following me, if you're buying my products, until and unless you understand that fact, I could put out all the products in the world. I could fucking lead you until the cows come home. It ain't going to make a damn bit of difference in your own sorry ass life because you are not taking action, okay? You can't simply expect a leader to magically solve problems. A leader's job is to motivate, inspire. I trust I do a pretty good job of doing that. It's to kick ass. It's to constantly improve, constantly exhort people to improve, constantly tell people you can better the leader, you can be better than me. Uh, it's not about Tom Tumming saying, you know, I'm the best. It's about saying you can be better than me if you try. Anybody can do it if I can do it. But unless you have that inside of you, man, and the vast majority of people just don't, then that's neither the sort of follower I want. And uh, it's all the leadership in the world isn't going to make a damn bit of difference until and unless you take that inspiration as, you know, fodder to improve your own fucking life. You know, you do what is, you do what is required, you know. Uh, if you're one of these followers, oh, I'm just, he looks so good, I'm just, then just unfollow me, you know. If you're one of these, oh, he can do pull-ups so well, but I can't, you know, and you take no fucking action. If you're like a lot of my, you know, people I talk to that have diabetes and uh, all these other medical issues, you tell them to exercise, oh, yeah, I'll do it, but they never fucking do, and they keep complaining about it, their medical issues and all that. Oh, it's genetic, this, that, you know, unfollow me, all right? I can't help you all the leadership in the world. That's why I don't talk to many people because people are fucking, they won't take the action required to improve their own fucking life. Applies to pull-ups, applies to fitness, applies to money, applies to life, business, no matter what it is. You know, the best leaders in the world, they're not there to save your ass. They're there to motivate you to save your own fucking ass. That's, and to improve your own fucking life. That's really the bottom line. And uh, see y'all later.